In this video, I'm gonna show you how I came up with the methodology of retiring by the age of 30 years old. And crucially, I'm gonna show you how to do it without being a frugal Scrooge. I want you to enjoy your life. I'm constantly reminded that we only probably had 85 Christmases, 85 summers. I'm 35 years old now, and I probably only got 40 good summers and 40 good Christmases left. So you wanna enjoy your life? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can retire early and how you can do it having fun along the way. Now, before we go any further, there's a couple of things that I'd like you to do. If you're loving this sort of content, massage the like button and give it a big fat punch. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as we're trundling through this video, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. See, I really want to be able to get over to people how I've done this. I'm a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur. I take risks as a natural state of my DNA, but I understand that not everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. So towards the end of the video, I'm going to explain how you would do this if you wasn't a business owner. But at the beginning part of this, I'm going to talk through the business owner methodology, the methodology that I took, because I think that's really useful for the foundations on how I think and how the most successful people that I've met, and I've met a lot of them, on how they think so that you could literally retire at the age of 30. I think you can retire within 10 short years if you practice what I'm about to show you right now. Behind this yellow piece of paper is the key strategy that I know all successful wealthy people do that have retired early. They simply have the mindset of investing. This could be small, this could be investing in Facebook shares, uh, Disney shares, or even investing in some property to rent out to people. See, some people will have these little wins that come in their life, they've inherited some money, they might get a bonus from work, they might get a pay rise. What usually happens is people morph into that rise in income and their lifestyle expands and that cash flow that they've increased deteriorates very quickly. What I always did in my life was live like this, Behind the green sheet really is the secret to success of entiring, retiring early in my opinion. It's what I call 50-50 living. If you bring in 50% of your income, you can live on that, have a great life, but you must invest the other 50%. And if you do that, practice that, you'll have a great life. Now there is some problems to this because I said at the beginning of this video that I didn't wanna lead a frugal lifestyle. I'll show you how to do it without being a frugal Scrooge. Most people in the United Kingdom have an average salary which I'm gonna to reveal to you on the next slide that allows them not to be able to do this. But if you could do this, here's what I would do. 50% of my income goes into living, going on holiday, buying food, paying your rent, your car, whatever it is. 50% is then invested into assets. These are called, in my opinion, slow pounds or slow dollars if you're in the United States. You're investing it into slow pound building assets that over a period of time slowly grow, but they're really strong. The money that comes into your personal bank account, maybe from your job or the cash flow from your business is fast pounds. It comes in fast and goes fast, just like your salary. It comes in every month and by the end of the month, it disappears. That's most people's life because they've got living expenses. If you can invest 50% into assets that generate over time passive income, this is where you're investing money that over a period of time then pays you passively, like rent on a property or dividends from stocks and shares. So you've got property rental and dividends as the main two forms of passive income. But you could also build a commercially profitable business that works without you in it, and over time it pays you dividends and you put in a great management team to run the business business for you. Now, all of these passive income strategies don't happen overnight. You couldn't just go and buy Disney shares and expect to get great dividends next week. Usually you need to hold shares for decades for that to start to happen. The same is with property. Now, whilst you would get instant cash flow rental income from buying a property on day one in that same month, really after owning it for 10 years, that's when the property value hugely increases, the rents have increased, and your debt is minimizing. So you're getting that huge benefit of passive income. So let's have a look at what the stages are. How do you do what I've just said? How can you invest 50% of your income into assets and then create passive income that works without you in it to allow you to retire by the age of 30? And crucially, you're probably thinking, well, James, how did you do it? Well, I did do this. Well, before I was 30, I'd done it in real quick order because I invested in business, I invested in property, and they were starting to spin off passive income. And I wanna show you the strategy that I took. So you're probably watching this thinking, I wanna know more, how do I get more information? Well, YouTube's a forum where we only really release 15 minute videos, but on my Entrepreneurs University 
I go into detail on all of this stuff and a whole heap more. You can try my Entrepreneurs University for free for 14 days. How do you do it? You go to my website, jamesinclair.net, and I'll really show you how to grow a business. Let's do it. See, this is the average salary in the United Kingdom, 25,000 pounds. Now, in America, I believe it's $50,000, and this fluctuates between 23 and 28,000 pounds if you look on different websites. So I've mediumed it up to 25,000 pounds. If you was to live off of half of that, and let's not take tax into account here, because you're gonna be taxed on some of that, but let's say that you wasn't taxed on some of that. To keep the maths really simple, that means I'm saying you can live on 12 and a half grand and you can invest 12 and a half grand. Now I guarantee that if you invest 12 and a half grand every year into good safe stocks like Facebook, Google, Disney, or maybe into real estate, the compounding effect of doing that after 10 years, so if you bought a property on year one, you invest 12 and a half grand, maybe you buy a house up north in the United Kingdom, you put your 12 and a half thousand deposit in, you get the rental income after 10 years, the compounding effect, that would be amazing. If you could buy a house at that 12 and a half grand every single year for 10 years, imagine what that would do for your wealth. And I know what you're thinking right now. I need all of my 25,000 pound salary to pay all my bills and have some form of life. And the reason I'm watching this video is because James, at the beginning, you said you wouldn't have to live a frugal lifestyle. Frugal Scrooge. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to enjoy your life. Now, while saying that, I don't want you to pay to live. I don't believe that you should borrow to go on holiday or borrow to buy a sofa or borrow to do some decoration in your house. I think you should not do that stuff. That's all going to be sensible to make sure you're not in a rut of creating unnecessary debt. One of the top things to do to make sure that you retire by the age of 30 is only borrow to make, never borrow to live. So I want to borrow as much money as I can to buy real estate, to buy businesses. And if I'm borrowing at two, three, four, five percent, but making 15, 10, 20, 30 percent, then that's a really smart thing to do. So habit number one is only borrow to make, never borrow to live. So how can we get through this 25,000 pounds? I need all of that to live. Well, some of you are probably thinking, well, you just go and find a job that pays a higher salary, but that takes time to do and you might need to be older and have more experience to do that. How can we get things moving quicker like I did? Well, number one, you can earn money from income. High value celebrities and CEOs and people, high positions of jobs generate high income that allows them to invest into assets. And some people do make money from assets, but usually it's generational wealth. They've inherited this. It takes time for assets to build. Number three is business. And number four is marry, death, divorce. So you could marry someone. You could be 25 years and go and marry a, someone that's older that's made loads of money and that could help you retire by the age of 30. Or sadly through divorce and through death. These are ways that people definitely can generate cash. We're not going to look at number four. We're going to look at the top three. How do you increase your income to invest 50% into assets? Well, for me, it was number three, business. Because if you build a business, you literally have control over the cash flow that you generate that allows you to invest into assets that allows you to retire early. Now, before we go any further, let me tell you about my James Sinclair podcast. I've created the business broadcast where I interview entrepreneurs and coach them on how to grow their business. I do this for free. Maybe you you'd like to come on my podcast and have me coach you on how to change your business and how to do this stuff. All you need to do is go to my website, jamesinclair.net, and you can apply to come on my podcast to grow your business and in this case, your retirement age planning. So how did I do it, guys? It was using this philosophy, what I call the misses, multiple revenue streams. This is the stages that I think that you now need to go through to be able to retire at 30, as most people that I know have done it, have done. So stage number one is you get yourself a job. You need to get some cash flow, some income coming in. That seems pretty obvious. Stage number two is to start a side hustle. So you've got your job, start selling on Facebook Marketplace, start selling on eBay. All of the profits that you make from that side, huff, side hustle, shove into buying stocks and shares first of all. Then when you've got enough stocks and shares, maybe then start doing real estate when you've got enough for a deposit for a property. This, even if you just do this, get a job that pays all your living bills and then start flipping stuff and doing boot sales and selling stuff online. Anyone can do that and generate an extra 500 to 1,000 pounds a month. I literally think that is so easy to do. That gives you then 12,000 pounds a year to 
invest and an hallelujah, you can have a decent retirement by 30 because you've got a big chunk of change invested. And I'm talking about doing this from your 16 years old. You're investing 12 and a half thousand pounds a year from your side hustle into stuff. The compounding effect of that over 14-ish years means that you will definitely be able to retire by 30. Most people just will not do that. What they'll do is they'll create a side hustle, sell 500 to a thousand pounds worth of stuff, and then they'll invest it into holidays and buying stupid stuff. But if you imagine doing this, then you can really have some fun because you want to really get into the mindset that your investments fund the fun, not your income funding the fun. So if you invest £12,500 per year into stocks and shares or into property, fund your fund from the rentals and the dividends that spin off of that because every month you're going to get another top up of dividends and you can literally have the most fantastic lifestyle. Let's have a look at what stage three is. People that do this really well then become solopreneurs. They're looking at their side hustle and they're thinking, hmm, if I invest all my time into this, I can eclipse what I'm earning in my job in most cases. So they become the solopreneur. They're a one-man band, business owner, entrepreneur, usually swapping time for money, but they're swapping good money for their time, thus increasing their income, allowing them to invest more that will get you to that goal of retiring by the age of 30. Now let's have a look at what happens at stage four for the people that make it. Not many people get it to this stage, but I call them business owners. So they've started employing people. When they employ people, they're given the beauty of extra time so they can do even higher value tasks, and when I say higher value tasks, income generating tasks rather than operating tasks. So they're employing people to do all the day-to-day -day stuff so they can go out there and shop for some opportunities. Usually these people are still control freaks over what they do and they want massive control over what they do, so they never break through into the real echelons of investing and wealth. Stage number five is becoming an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs have a very different mindset to business owners. They really want to go somewhere. They want to build some serious vision planning and create great businesses. But the crucial difference between these two, entrepreneurs are now thinking about freedom of time. Entrepreneurs put management teams in place rather than being the management team of the business they own. This is an owner managed business. This is an owner business with a management team in place. The next stage, stage number six, is becoming an investorpreneur. An investorpreneur usually has multiple revenue streams, but multiple business revenue streams. And this is where I see myself at. I've got my property income stream, my day nursery income stream. We've just bought an ice cream company, that revenue stream, my commercial property revenue streams, my visitor attractions revenue streams. And I've built a fantastic management team that are brilliant, better than me. So you're starting to employ people better than you to run the day-to-day -day of the business so that you can crucially do the yay moment, which is retirement, where you have time, cash to invest, and crucially, you're free, in my opinion, at that stage you're retired and then you can do the big thing where you can keep going through choice. And this is the big difference and that, that to me is what most successful wealthy people do when they reach retirement. They carry on doing stuff. They never retire because it's in their DNA but they're doing this. They keep going through choice. They're doing stuff that they really want to do that really fulfills them in life. When we go back up here with the job it might not be a fulfilling job. If you can find a job that absolutely fulfills you then to me you've retired. <laughs> I mean even if you only earn £10,000 a year but you love what you do you're there gang. See to me I wanted to go through this stuff Stage. And I did see my first business as a job where I was swapping time for money. I was a kid's entertainer, a magician. Then I was done a side hustle. I was hiring out bouncy castles and selling party bags and props and equipment. That was my side hustle of my existing job. I come through to here and I'm, I'm a solopreneur. I'm now making around £150,000 a year doing this business. I started employing people. I become a business owner. I'm not doing all the day to day on my own. I'm now an entrepreneur. I've got a good management team in place. I then become an investorpreneur because I'm generating cash over here that allows me to think like an investor and entrepreneur fused together to buy passive income property investments that allow me to retire and now I'm doing this stuff. I keep going through choice because I want to do what I do because I love what I'm doing. Now there are some caveats to this and I wanted to really point this out. Business ownership isn't for everyone. Being a business owner, being an entrepreneur in my opinion is a certain set of DNA. You have to 
to have the capacity to borrow money. Most people are scared about borrowing money. Me giving personal guarantees, constantly getting customers, employing people, responsibility of being a director. Some people just want a nice lifestyle without all the stress. All those things that I've just said there, by the way, are things that I thrive off of. I love doing that stuff. But I do believe, I do believe that everyone can do this. Business ownership isn't for everyone, but investing absolutely is. So what if you've got a job and you have no plans to go and start your own business? I definitely think you can do a side hustle and sell stuff on the side and generate some cash. Why shouldn't you be doing that? But get a job that you love doing, guys. Like I said to you at the beginning of this video, you've got 85 Christmases, 85 good summers. Some people have less than that, tragically. So get a job that you love with the people that you enjoy working with. I literally love the team I work with and I think I spend more time with the people I work with than my family. So I want to enjoy spending time with them. And then when you're generating some of your income, just invest some of it. Even if you can't get to 50-50, invest at least 20% of it. Next, find good companies that grow, that can offer you great job opportunities that will increase your salary over a period of time where you work with them, where you can see that this is a place where I can grow with this company to increase my income that's going to allow me to invest. Gang, I can't begin to tell you if you just invest £100 a month into Google shares or into some really good growing companies like Facebook, the compounding effect of that over time will allow you to really retire early. Think about that, 100, two, 300 pounds a month. Isn't that possible? Most people spend more on that going out for dinner each month. Think about the wealth that could create and the compounding effect of that over a period of time. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you've picked up some good tips on the roadmap to retiring early. If you've loved this video, please make sure you subscribe. Hit in the comments below letting me know what you think. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking here. And watch this video here because YouTube tell me you're gonna love it. See you in the next video, bye-bye.